Well, hello there, and welcome to Antelope Island State Park in northern Utah. This is the largest island that sits in the Great Salt Lake here in northern Utah. Right now we're looking east at the Wasatch Mountains, this big imposing uh, set of mountains that forms the eastern edge of the basin and range, a uh, mountain range that was uplifted by a large normal fault, which runs along the base of the mountain front. Uh, and we're out here on the east side of Antelope Island on a beautiful spring day uh, to learn a little bit more about the geology here and what these rocks can tell us about this area's history, looking at the rocks themselves, looking at their characteristics. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. And our objective today is this is gonna be a four part video series um, with the idea of working our way up this ridge behind me because this ridge nicely exposes four discrete sets of rocks, all of which tell a fascinating tale about this region and its geologic history. And so uh, in part one, we're gonna focus on the rocks here at the bottom part of the hill, the rocks that are surrounding me. In part two, we'll be up near the skyline there looking at some different rocks that are quite a bit younger. And then right above them, that'll be part three. And then finally, we'll end up just beyond the ridge, um, but along the spine, more or less, of this island, looking at some rocks. Our journey here today, from part one to part four, is gonna take us from these rocks, which are about 1.8 billion years old, from a time period called the Proterozoic, up into parts two and three, where, where we'll look at rocks from the last part of the Paleozoic, what's called the Neoproterozoic, about 720 to 650 million years ago. And then finally, we'll be um, just beyond the top of the ridge there, looking at rocks that are Cambrian in age, about 500 to 550 million years old. So our journey is gonna take us through 1.3 billion years of Earth's history, and we're gonna see quite a bit of diversity, not just in the rocks themselves, but in the stories they have to tell. So let's start with these rocks that are surrounding me here. And this is as good as any. We can start uh, with this, this little boulder right here. And these rocks here that we're looking at that are from the Proterozoic 1.7 to 1.8 billion years ago, these rocks are what we call basement rocks. They are the oldest rocks in this part of North America. They form the oldest rocks. If you think of rocks as sort of a stacked up sequence of rocks, these would be at the bottom of the stack. To see rocks of this age or comparable age or type, you would need to go to the bottom of the Grand Canyon where similar rocks exist or in uplifted mountain ranges like the Wasatch or the Tetons, you can see rocks like these as well. So let's start with this one here. We can see this rock is distinctly layered. It looks like it's made out of crystals rather than grains of sediment or organisms. Um, and so with this pronounced mineral layering here, it has all the characteristics of a foliated metamorphic rock because it has these alternating light and dark layers where the lighter colored minerals and the darker minerals are somewhat segregated. This would be a rock called Nice, G-N-E-I-S-S. -S. And these rocks have been featured in my Rock Identification with Will C series. So if you're interested in learning how to identify rocks a little bit better on your own, you might look to that series um, on my YouTube channel. So it looks like this, this unit here, these 1.8 billion year old um, set of rocks contains quite a bit of gneisses. Let's see what other kinds of rocks we can find. These rocks, these gneisses, are among the high grade metamorphic rocks that we find, which means that these rocks formed under tremendous temperatures and pressures. Um, and in order to get temperatures and pressures this elevated, you would need to have um, these rocks be buried very deeply. So not only were they probably squeezed by colliding plates or two continents colliding, but they were also very likely at high temperatures because they were buried so deeply, tens of miles possibly beneath the Earth's surface. Uh, here's something a little different over here. Um, so if we come over here and take a look at this material, it's obviously different in color. It's a lighter color. We don't see the distinct banding in it. In fact, uh, we see that it's more or less kind of a hodgepodge mixture 
of light colored material mostly. Um, mineral wise, we can identify a lot of this has a lot of quartz in it. So there's this uh, grayish shadowy material is quartz. Looks like there's also some feldspar in here. So these uh, crystals that have these flat reflective surfaces are feldspar crystals. Um, and then it also looks like this rock has these, I guess, BB size, somewhat reddish brown, although they weather in, into a little bit darker color here. These are crystals of, of garnet. So we have some garnet crystals in here that form these little red and dark colored specks throughout the rock. And what we have here then, this is actually an igneous rock. The texture is uh, that of an igneous rock with these larger crystals. This is what's often called a pegmatite. And pegmatites are similar fundamentally to granites in that it's magma that cools underground. But in this case, um, the crystals grew quite a bit larger than what we'd see maybe in a typical granite. And so this is, um, a lot of times this is because of water or fluids that are also present within uh, the magma system. But this is a large pegmatite dike. And we can tell it's a dike because here you can actually see it cutting across the rock layers. You can see a sharp contact right here between the brown gneiss, the metamorphic gneiss, and then the rest of this dike. So the dike itself is maybe, oh, I don't know, about two or so meters wide. Um, we can see more dark rock on this side. So that looks like that's more or less the edge of the pegmatite dike. And we might be able to trace it out across the landscape as well. So we've got metamorphic gneiss, uh, pegmatites, which represent magma um, moving through these rocks. Let's see what other rocks we can find. Here's another great example of the gneiss right here, the banding in the gneiss, and then again, a nice sharp con contact here, and then the pegmatite uh, material as well, this white, um, and here the garnets are quite a bit larger. You can see the outline of this reddish uh, material here. So pretty fascinating. There's just so much diversity uh, in these rocks. Um, so this is a unit called the Farmington Canyon Complex. Uh, again, it's the same as what you'd see at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, although the names are different. The rock ages and overall rock types are somewhat similar. Um, Here's something a little bit different. So here we have a rock that hopefully you can see the, the nice shiny crystals in here. These are all mica crystals and these muscovite and biotite mica crystals are forming a layered surface here. That's why it's so reflective. And because we have mica as the dominant mineral, this is a metamorphic rock called schist. And so we can see the foliated surface here Schists are also fairly high temperature, um, high pressure metamorphic rocks. So schists and gneisses and pegmatites forming all these scrubby outcrops and boulders here in the uh, Farmington Canyon complex, these 1.8 billion year old set of rocks. Um, so we'll work our way up now for part two. So please join me in the next section when we head up the hillside here uh, and look at some of these outcrops that are capping the ridge. I think we'll see that they are quite a bit different from these very ancient and um, incredibly high temperature pressure metamorphic and igneous rocks. These rocks actually formed when a large supercontinent named Rodinia was starting to form. Um, continents and fragments of continents were coming together and colliding. And um, as the crust was thickened, these rocks here would represent some of those rocks that were at the very deep roots of those large uplifted mountain ranges. So just fantastic sequence of beautiful uh, metamorphic rocks. There's some beautiful banding here. Uh, and the nice. So we'll go ahead and head up the ridge now. So please join me for part two of the series when we're up here looking at the next section of rock as we take in all the scenic beauty here on Antelope Island.